I've been running away from home my whole life. Running away from home into the streets, um, and then into juvenile hall and prison. At first, when I walked through Homeboys, I really didn't have too much honor and respect for myself. For a long time, you, you grow with that guilt, you know, that you don't deserve a better life because of the things that you've done. Abandonment of not knowing who my father was, the abandonment of my mother when she eventually became hooked on drugs, that experience um, made me feel like I wasn't worthy of love. Homeboy Industry started in 1988 to help former gang members get a new start, embrace their agency, and chart lives they wouldn't have thought possible. When this began, it, we were just responding to need, and we were trying to offer a pathway out. We were helping gang members redirect their lives. That was really hard in the early years because nobody wanted to fund us, nobody wanted to support us. We couldn't find employers willing to give a chance to felons and gang members and tattooed folks. But the first 10 years were really marked by bomb threats, death threats, and hate mail. Never from gang members, because we always represented hope to them, but, but there were folks who couldn't wrap their arms around the notion of helping a people who were so thoroughly demonized in our society. When you are bombarded most of your life with messages that you don't matter, with messages that you're um, not valuable, then there's a lethal absence of hope, as Greg always says. When you then come through our doors and you meet people who look like you, who perhaps you were locked up with, and even someone that maybe you used to shoot at on the streets that now wants the best for you, that changes your experience in the world and that changes the way in which you see yourself and your part in the world. This is why we always say that um, community trumps violence and community trumps gangs because we're a community of unconditional love. At Homeboy Industries, we are with our clients, our trainees, around 18 months. Uh, and across those 18 months, then we, then we provide a comprehensive set of services, from educational services to work on their high school degree, or even junior college, to also life skill classes, and then, then mental health services, and, and, and sobriety classes, and domestic violence classes. So it's a whole host of services also all putting together within work therapy. We have social enterprise businesses, and it's within those businesses that we have our people work there. That, and it's really about work therapy and teach them to balance life struggles at the same time, all done in a very therapeutic community. Yeah, people are accustomed to saying, you know, give people a, a second chance. But these aren't people who've missed a chance or lost an opportunity. They just haven't ever been given any uh, hope. It's not correct to think that you know people make bad choices because not all choices are created equal. Homeboy Industries embodies the spirit of the Hilton Humanitarian Prize and of the work of the Hilton Foundation in its emphasis on equity, on resilience, and on dignity. I'm really pleased to announce that Homeboy Industries is the recipient of the 2020 Hilton Humanitarian Prize. This is the first time that this international prize has gone to a nonprofit based here in Los Angeles, our hometown. Homeboy's model has given a blueprint to hundreds of organizations and social entrepreneurs from Alabama to Idaho, from Guatemala to Scotland. And today, that large family is the global Homeboy network. Where everybody here at Homeboy is a practitioner in the methodology that we've embraced, it's a powerful message from the Hilton Foundation that our efforts all these many years have really been about standing with people who have felt real rejection. It validates what we've been doing for 32 years. This award is an acknowledgement of the hard work that the young ladies and young men that come through our doors have contributed. When I think about that, it truly touches me because I deal with the lives every day. I deal with the tears every day. When I was growing up, I, I would tell my brothers, like, don't ever cry. You know, don't ever cry in front of anybody. Don't ever, don't ever show weakness because if you do, they'll take advantage of you. Here I am going down Alameda with my brother and my brother is sobbing. He's sobbing, uncontrollably sobbing. And I look over at my brother and I go, hey homie, why are you crying? 
And he looks at me and he says, uh, why in the F do they care about us? He couldn't wrap his head around it. But in my heart, I felt like, because you're worthy, homie. Because you're just a little boy. And you should be loved like this. You know, people should care about you. And in that moment, in that experience, um, something inside of me changed forever. Father Greg always has a saying that says, like, you aren't the worst thing you've ever done. I learned the positive traits about myself at Homeboys. Homeboys to me is just all that. It's me. It built me. It made me. And it, it gave myself a chance to, like, see what I could be. Homeboy gave me life, right? A life that is worth living and fighting for and can make my family proud. When I came through the doors, it was more like, oh, I don't belong here, I don't fit in, I don't, you know, but this place changes you. You would never know how this place changes you until you in these walls. And you leave here and we find a job for you beyond this place. And indeed the world will throw at you what it will, but this time you're not gonna be toppled by it because you know the truth of who you are. You know who you are. You know that you are exactly what God had in mind when God made you, and so you become that truth, you inhabit that truth. No bullet can pierce it. No four prison walls can keep it out. Death can't touch it. <laughs>